topic today and our very, very special guest, uh, Linda Holt of Linda Holt Creative and a very dear friend, a long time friend. And um, Linda, we're going to be talking about tips and tricks for phone photography. Right now it's iPhone, but we'll, we'll have a little bit more to add to that in a minute too. So Linda, first of all, thank you so much for coming on the show. We are so excited that you could make the time. And I know everybody is preparing today for the six o'clock virtual show house from Seasonal Living also. So you probably work on, on cocktails sort of under your laptop right now <laughs> for that. But th thank you so much for having us um, uh, or for, for joining us rather. Uh, Linda, tell us a little bit how about your story, your background of photography and interior design and how the two kind of became one. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me. I am just so excited to, to be here and share with everybody. Um, so my background is I was a uh, professional photographer for a little over 25 years. I had a studio in downtown Boston. And my other passion, what I did on the weekends, was interior decorating. And I loved my career as photography, but after 25 years, I just became really sort of burned out from the business. And then the recession hit in 2008. And that kind of was like the writing on the wall. Um, business literally just tanked. And I had a really expensive studio in Boston. Um, you know, it was hard to even make the rent. So I took that opportunity to go back to school for interior design which was something I was still passionate about. And when I left, um, took all my classes, and then I closed my photography studio for good, really you know, made the clean break. And I opened up um, Linda Holt, at the time it was called Linda Holt Interiors, in 2011. And at the time, I didn't tell anybody about my background because I didn't want to confuse people to think, oh, what, what does she do? So I kept them very, very separate. So I felt like I had this, these two closet lies where, you know, I would do photography, but I wouldn't tell the photography clients that I did design and then I would do design and it was becoming <laughs> crazy. But then I thought, you know what, this is me. And I started wrapping them in together. And that's where I've ended up today, embracing them both. Um, but really keying in on helping designers get better photos. Um, the reason why I concentrate on the cell phone, specifically the iPhone, is because I sold all my equipment. I literally, you know, burned the boats, as they say. Um, and I had to learn how to get really good with my iPhone because I no longer had my big, heavy DSLR cameras. So do, do you miss, first of all, and I want to back into this a little bit, and I, I love that you kind of did that big switch, Aru, and I like the closet photography. I can see you now where you're kind of, you know, walking through Boston going, I'm not a photographer. <laughs> you know, which is actually funny because I think people would be very excited. They're both such visual mediums, and I think they have more in common than, than kind of meets the eye. But uh, do, do you miss the photography part? Do you miss working in a studio and really digging into headshots and stuff like that? Not at all? Not at all. I, you know, I did it for so long and it wasn't like exciting anymore. Where now every day I get up and I'm excited about my day. Where mm -hmm. I got to the point where I knew I was burned out when the phone would ring and somebody would want to make an appointment and I'd go like, oh, God, someone made an appointment. I just, it was, ex, you know, it was exhausting. And also I had all sorts of um, neck problems and back problems from all those years of lifting really heavy equipment and schlepping stuff on location. So I was in physical pain. I was mentally exhausted. Um, and I really feel like embracing the interior decorating or design is really just fed new life into me. And it was like I felt starting all over again. And it was so exciting for me and it's still and it still is so i know we want to talk about photography but i gotta you know you've brought that that burnout up, up a couple of times and actually right. somebody in the in the group today posted about burnout as well kind of saying you know can i even ask this right uh, is, is it okay to kind of fess up to that so you know you talked about the 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 photography burnout, but I think you've had a little bit of that going on with the on the design end of things as well. Can we talk about that? Sure, absolutely. Um, when I started, I, I went down the path that I thought you know I should go down, which was full service interior design, and I got some you know big projects. 
And what I found for myself, especially after going through, you know, all those years of working, I'm not 30. Um, I've gone through breast cancer. I decided I don't want that stress in my life. And full service design was more stress. I really sat back during COVID and said, what do I really love doing? I love designing. I love helping people. I hate managing projects. I hate uh, dealing with all the problems of things coming in broken or wrong or delayed and um, being the middleman. And I just said, I'm done with that. So I, during COVID, made the decision to no longer do full service interior design and just totally make the switch to consults only. And that's sort of my superpower and my sweet spot. So that's what I've really like leaned into is just doing the consults. And I had to be okay with it because I thought, oh, I'm not going to have any good photos for my portfolio and people are going to think I'm, you know, not a real designer. So I struggled with all of those insecurities. And finally, I just said, screw it. I don't care. I'm just going to do what makes me happy um, and not do what everyone else thinks I should do. I don't, I don't care. Yes, anymore. that's the line. That's yes. the line right there. Yes, girl. Not what, I, what everybody else thinks I should do, you know, and all the good advice out there in the world. And I, I have to tell you, especially having known you for a good number of years now, uh, you know, Linda, this sort of soft spoken, gentle, gentle soul to kind of say, go out a few years later and say, screw it. I want to do what makes me happy, you know, and I'm going to break the rules. And I'm not, look, you're getting all the comments. <laughs> look too. at all the comments coming in. I'm in, sister. This is, this is really, really important. And, you know, to kind of carve out your space and, and take this year's pause, I think, to kind of uh, say, you know, what do we want to do? I mean, Katie and I have this this thing, you know, we just yeah. kind of said, hey, you want to do this? Do this, this? Want to do this thing? <laughs> and, you, and you do the thing, you know, and um, there, there are not a whole lot of thought goes in it because this year I think all bets are off. So it's right. the perfect repositioning year. Yeah. I'm not drinking on the word pivot today. I was I just going to say, would you, would you have one pivot in here already? And we're not I don't, I don't have, I'm, I'm still very, <laughs> so this is my first day in my office. And I just need to say this really, really quickly. This thing behind mm. me, it's not going to stay. Okay. I did not hire a muralist to put a stick of bamboo behind my head. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was is, a real plan. This is my 1940s house and we're working through it in pieces. And I thought, do I put something up to kind of hide it? I said, no, no. we're going to go through this journey together as I um, get rid of the sage and the pink and the blue in this house. So anyway, that's why I have that back here. But, <laughs> but I also don't know where the wine is right now because everything is packed in boxes. So oh. <laughs> otherwise it would be fine. Um, and so, but it is a pivot. It is a pivot. And I think this is, if this is not the year of pivoting, then, then I don't know what is. And, and you've done something really exceptional because I think for designers, it's not just great to be able, a lot of designers don't get a chance to go back in and take the pictures. Don't get a chance to bring the photographer. Don't get a chance to, um, you know, or, or it's simply a budget problem that right. where you're like, now you're at, what's it cost? You know, right. another several thousand dollars At extra yeah. and you need you need the documentation you need the portfolio shots you need the working shots and and i think you've really carved out a piece here in the industry that's that's quite remarkable to help people kind of get some of this work done on their own um you know and and just have more to to promote themselves to promote their work you need it for social media you need it for blogs and you know, some of what you're doing is, I, I would say, probably pretty close to publication quality, right? When you get done. A lot of my photos now, it took a long time for me to get here, but a lot of my photos look as good as if I had had my DSLR camera and all my lights and had done everything. But it, it, it was a learning experience, um, for sure, because my early shots, which you'll see in a minute, were <laughs> definitely not there. Let's take Which a look funny. at it. Yeah, um, and as we're teeing that up, it was funny when we were doing our pre-con and Veronica and I both were just like, oh, okay, we can see everything we've been doing wrong all <laughs> along and all these examples, no! But I, that's that's why we're here today. And, and I just wanted to kind of chime in as well. And it, this is so needed on the technology side as as well. So I'm hoping that my integrator friends have have, have jumped in, um, if not on this one, but on the recording. This is it, really good information. So show us, take us down the path, Linda. 
<laughs> well, you know, to your point, Katie, and, and again, yes, we, we talked a little bit about this, but having, um, you know, if you're an integrator, and especially the conversations you and I have all the time to kind of help connecting the tech side back into the design side, the designers, the designer will want to see projects. They want to see what's it what's it going to look like. We're a visual bunch. Can't be helped. We love that you do stuff behind the walls, but frankly, we don't really care. <laughs> um, we we want to see what's it going to look like. How's it going to work? You know, what's the what's the overall impact uh, on my project if I work with you? So the photography is is really important, and and your people are. Uh, leaving those projects way, way early and really don't yeah. come back in, right? Right, right. And that and that's a big challenge. And, and it's, you know, it's also sort of establishing the relationship with the customer to one to make sure that it's okay, the photography is taken and shared. And that's, that's huge. And I know you'll touch on <laughs> touch on that. But it's impossible to get back so many times and or, you know, the other trades have come on and, and are in the middle of their project now. And you can, you know, it doesn't make sense to take in a photographer. So it really is. I mean, it's like, you could just kind of seize the moment and, and, you know, <laughs> kind of take control of the situation, because you can't get guarantee that you get back in. And if you don't, then you really don't have you. It's kind of there's kind of this thing that says, you know, if, it, if, if it's not posted on Facebook, or there's enough picture, it didn't it didn't happen. And that's kind of true, you know, so you can tell a beautiful story. But if there isn't an image to back it up, it, the story kind of falls falls flat. And that's sort of my PSA coming in from the agency side. And it's it's such a bummer when we get these great project stories. And it's like, yeah, but we didn't get any photography. And it's like, well, that's a cool conversation to have, but there really isn't a story there. So for storytelling yeah. purposes, it's perfect. Yeah, you know the story. So why don't we go have a look at everything we've done wrong? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm ready to change everybody's photos from bad Please do. Please do. And before, uh, before we kick it off, uh, one really important point uh, to make is that Linda has a course. Mm -hmm. Uh, on iPhone photography, and I understand also coming soon to a theater near you, Android photography, which is what I need, um, to, to, that you guys can sign up for. And at the end of the presentation, there's a special code for you to knock off some, some money on the cost of that course, um, which is just for the KBI group. So sit tight for that. Uh, and we will drop all the links that you need to register for the course and take a closer look at it in the comments. Okay, right, so I did title my um, my talk iPhone photography, but honestly, what I'm going to tell you, I have seven tips that I want to share. Is really it's universal. It doesn't matter if you have a Pixel or a Samsung or or the tips are the same. So I'm going to show you my very early cell phone photos, which believe it or not were only about three years ago, and they looked just like this. They were dark, they were crooked, the lights, I, I literally knew nothing. And I'd look at these and I'd think, God, I'm a professional photographer. What is wrong with me? So what did I do? I blamed the phone. I said, oh, they take, the cell phone takes terrible photos. Um, and the, the reason why these were so bad is I knew nothing about the camera. I was just using it as a point and shoot. What I got, I got. Um, and then I started reading blogs and I follow a lot of photographers, professional ones on Instagram. And I was reading all these blogs of photographers that were ditching their heavy equipment and they were doing all their work with their cell phone, even their professional commercial jobs. And it kind of like opened my eyes to like, wow, how did they get that? So I got really frustrated with my photos enough to take action and I spent like, a good year down this path of trying to figure out how to get really good shots. I watched YouTube videos, I read blogs, I bought three or four different iPhone classes, and slowly I figured it out. Um, so really what my class is that I did just um, come out with is I boiled down all this information to really, uh, you know, sort of like a small modules that sort of tie it all together for designers. But you might think your photos look like this now. And I just want to say, don't feel bad because at the end of this, I'm going to show you all how to fix every one of these mistakes. So now and I- you know, you know what these remind me of also? I mean, yes, they're, they're interior. I, I see a lot of, including my own, real estate listings. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
And, and you're thinking, all you, you're, you have one job, dude, and that right. is to be a real estate photographer. Yep. Yep. And, well, my personal guy went in with a flash. Yep. I didn't even recognize my own house. And I told my realtor to, to take that off because Florence actually went in and shot better pictures than that by a long shot. And Crazy. you know what the problem with these are? Why they look like real estate photos? The so all cell phones have the super wide, they have a really wide angle lens. So everything mm -hmm. is showing. And also I left the lights on and realtors always go in and turn on the lights. And I think that photo on the right looks like my flash went off because I'm sure it was the fault because I never knew how to turn the flash off. So it was probably on auto. I can tell by the way that lampshade is real bright and the rest of the room is real dark that the flash went off. So those are all the things that a realtor will do to make those photos if they don't know what they're doing they'll look yeah. you're right they look like realtor photos yeah. but now i'm happy to show you my photos because this is my photos and the next slide will show you my photos today and i took all of these with my cell phone and honestly i don't think i could have done better had i had my you know expensive equipment and brought lights in um, and i'm going to share with you in these um in the next in the next few um slides then my seven tips for getting photos that that look more like this they look unbelievable i mean the, the top left one looks straight up magazine it, yes. it's incredible it's amazing. um okay so tip number one is a lot of people make the mistake of not holding their phone correctly so if you want to enlarge me flow so i can show you how the correct way to hold the phone would be. So most people do this, they hold it up by their eye or close to their face and they tilt it down. Now, what happens when you do that because of the wide angle lens is you're gonna get lines that are gonna either do this or this and they're gonna be really wonky and it's especially bad in interiors. What you wanna do is always hold your phone on the exact same plane as what you're shooting. So you don't wanna be holding it down or holding it up. So if you're shooting an interior, generally you want it around waist level or maybe a little above your waist because that will be on the same plane as the furniture. But don't hold your phone up and tilt it. Always try to keep your phone level and on the same plane. Um, so like if so. it's waist level, how do I see it? So you get down on your knees or you can sit in a chair. Um, just, yeah. just, especially with furniture. I mean, in a, it also, if you're shooting something small, like a dog or, or a child, you don't want to stand up high and shoot down because what will happen is the head will be really, really big and then everything will sort of taper down. You'll get little teeny legs. So you always want to get on the same angle. So if you're shooting, say, um, your dog or, or your child or your grandchild, you want their eye level to be right at about where your... Um, you know, where your lens is. So you do want to get down nice and low. I do that on purpose. So because I look really svelte, if I hold the phone way yeah. up here, I have a huge head, so that works which is too. fine, I do anyway. And then it just kind of tapers down. Yeah. It's so really good for grownups. So that just, is that is one trick to, to take. And you can have little teeny <laughs> feet that are a size four. <laughs> yes. I don't even take the feet anymore because there's only, we talked about this the other day, there's only slippers, only fluffy slippers, no more shoes. Right. So forget about that. That's what like, I wear too. That's my yes. <laughs> I have sweatpants on below my just below the shirt. <laughs> what, 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 happens what happens below is it's just <laughs> nobody's business, you know. And slippers are slippers are fine, you know. That's right. <laughs> All right. So hold your phone correctly. Number one. Number two is. You want to learn how to use the in-camera features on your phone. So all the phones, no matter what model you have, iPhone, you know, Samsung, Pixel, LG, they all have these modes or very similar ones. They have HDR, burst mode, live mode, um, portrait modes if you have one of the newer phones, and a 2X or 3X telephoto mode if you have even a really new one. And these all have their uses. Now, HDR um, is high definition, um, I'm sorry, high dynamic range. And what that does is it takes two pictures really quickly, one exposing for the highlights, one exposing for the shadows, plus a normal one. And it stitches them together to give you one optimal photo. Sometimes it's better than the original photo, sometimes it isn't. You really have to play around with it. But if you're shooting an interior and you have sun coming through the window and the room is a little bit dark, 
you can try HDR. Sometimes that can really make a difference. And then, you know, burst mode is great for anything that has motion. So I use burst mode a lot if I'm shooting in a, uh, like a room and want to get the client's pet in the room and the pet won't stay still. Burst mode is, burst mode is great. It will take 10 images a second and then you can choose the the image that you want um live mode is not really for interiors live mode shoots a short two to three second video before the exposure and then a two to three second video after the exposure it's kind of fun if you're shooting like a waterfall or something with motion portrait mode and the telephoto modes are great especially if you're a designer and you're shooting something like a tabletop or a vignette and you want the foreground nice and sharp but then it's it, if you want it to look more like a um a professional took it with a telephoto lens it will blur the background so portrait mode is great and again these are all phones have these and it's just a matter of learning how to use them playing around with it but it can really make a difference between an okay you know photo and one that will bring it over over the top and then in the next slide you always want to get in the habit of setting your exposure and your focus manually. This is really important. And this was the mistake that I made when I didn't know how to do this. I would just point and shoot. And if I got a dark photo, I got a dark photo. I didn't know I could control it. So again, this is similar on all phones, no matter if you use what phone you use. On the iPhone, the way you set the exposure is you hold your finger on the screen for a second or two and a yellow box will um, appear just like in the slide here. And there'll be a little tiny sun icon to the right. And then you can slide your finger up the screen to lighten it or down the screen to darken it. Now it's really similar on an Android. You hold your finger on the screen and a big dot appears. And on the Android, you slide your finger either left or right to lighten it or darken it. So you don't want to rely on the in-camera light sensor because oftentimes it's going to default and expose for the brightest thing in the room. So it's going to expose for the window light and make the rest of the room really, really dark. But by controlling it yourself, you can set the interior to get the nice brightness that you want. So this is probably setting the exposure is the most valuable thing you need to do. And you should get in the habit of doing doing it on any interior shot because you really need to. Outside, I find that the, all the cameras have a really good light sensor because it's not as con it's not as difficult lighting as it is in, inside. So outside, generally, point and shoot works fine. Inside, you really need to set the exposure yourself. See, I never and, knew. I'm so glad that you explained that because I never knew. I've I've seen the yellow box. I've seen the sun. Yep, hey, little yep. sun, you're cool. Didn't realize you could yep. uh, slide that. it up, <laughs> and the whole photo will lighten. Slide it down, and the whole photo will darken. And yeah. it's really more of an art than a science. Just keep playing with it. Go up and down until you. Oh, that looks good. Oh, that looks too bright, too dark. And just play around with it until you think you know that looks pretty good. Get it as good as you can. Great tip. And then my the next um, tip is to. Oops, I think we jumped, yeah. Oops. Oh, one. Yes, you want to um, also lock the focus. Now, the reason why locking the focus is important, um, if you're shooting a room, sort of like the money shot where you're getting the whole room in and it might be a long, narrow room or even like a big kitchen and you have a beautiful, you know, $10,000 range in the back, you might want the range to be the focus of that photo. So by holding your finger on anything in the photo until, again, that box will come up, you can see in the slide there, and you hold it after the, that little box with the sun, which is the exposure box, stops blinking, a yellow box will pop up that will say AEAF lock. That means the um, autofocus, auto exposure is now locked. So even if you move your phone around a little bit, what you put your finger on will be sharp as a tack. It won't lose the focus. So again, if you rely on your phone to pick the focus, it might think, you know, the drapery in the back of the room should be in focus when you want the chair in the foreground to be in focus. Or, you know, you might want, like I said, the stove to be in focus and have um, everything in the foreground blurred. So again, get in the habit of um, choosing the exposure yourself for full control. So the next slide is just an example showing you how this works. So in the photo on the left, I held my finger on the 
on the bowl of flowers. And you can see those are nice and sharp and in focus, but the background is all blurred, which is what I wanted. And then on the one on the right, I just reversed it and I held my finger on the china cabinet. So the china cabinet is in nice sharp focus and you can see the foreground is all blurred. So it gives you, it gives you um, control almost as if you're shooting with a DSLR camera and you've got a telephoto lens and you can zoom in and zoom out on what you want in focus. But you can do this with your cell phone and it just takes it to another more professional looking level. Hey, ha raise hands in the group. Who knew this? I, I panic. I held my finger on there by accident and then I completely freak out and go, oh my oh. God, there's a little pillow box that I do. Quick, oh, exit. Yeah. Because somehow I think I'm going to destroy the world. So no. this is... <laughs> It's like the red button, that master red button. It's okay. You're not going to blow up the world. I no, think. It's, it's, um, I think it's a little bit different as far as the focus of the Android, but but not much different. If you play around with it, and once I get my Android, I, I will know and I'll be able to tell you exactly what to do. All right. Tip number four, turn on your in-camera grid. Everybody should turn this on. If you don't have it on, again, it's the same no matter what model type phone you have. You just go into settings camera and turn on the grid. And what the grid is, it's a series of um, horizontal and um, vertical lines. And you can line up these grid lines into something in your photo that you know is perfectly straight, horizontal, or vertical. Now with interiors, architecture shots, it is so important that you have your line straight. So as an example, I turned off my grid I thought I was holding my phone pretty straight and pretty level, but you can see the result. The buildings look like they're about to fall over to the left. Even if you are off like a centimeter holding your phone, it can make your lines off. So I turned my grid back on. I lined up sort of the edge of one of those windows and I up the um, bell tower there, lined it up with one of the horizontal lines and look at the difference. It's architecturally correct now. It's straight, and I could not have done that without using that simple aid of the grid lines. So again, turn it on, leave it on. It's just so, such a helpful tool for the lines. And, you know, the problem, again, because cell phones all have that wide-angle lens, it's so easy for the lines to go, you know, this way or this way, um, but the grid will really help keep things straight. All right, moving on to tip number five. Oh, this we just a, have a question. Where yes. do you find the grid again? It's in settings, it's in general settings. phone settings. Go into, yep, go into settings, then go into camera, and then it should be right at the top. Um, right at the top, it'll say grid. Turn it on, and it'll be on your screen when you go to take a, when you turn your camera on. It won't be on your home screen. It'll be on your camera screen. Perfect. So, yes. Super. All Thanks. right. Tip number five, this is a mistake a lot of people make. They take their phone and they zoom out, they pinch out with their fingers to blow it up to get in closer. This is no a big mistake. What happens when you pinch your fingers out to blow up the photo is you're just degrading the photo by blowing up the pixels. So the, when That's you do the that- the only thing I knew how to do. I know. So the- <laughs> <laughs> the cell phone is not like a camera lens where it's optical, where when you're using a telephoto lens, you're zooming in and out and, and it's, it's the optical glass making it, you're just blowing up the pixels. So if you can remember this little saying, zoom with your feet, not with your fingers. But oftentimes we can't zoom with our feet. Maybe we're on a bridge and there's a, you know, a river, you know, between us and what we want to shoot, or maybe we're shooting something on the other side of the highway. So if you can't walk in closer to get closer to what you want to shoot, then the tip is just take the photo the best you can. If you have, you know, a, a zoom feature on your phone or a 2x feature, then by all means use that because that's a separate lens and it won't degrade the photo. But if you don't, take the photo as best you can and then crop in later because that will, will not nearly degrade the photo as much as pinching with your fingers. So this example of this image on the left took this in Paris in January when we were at the um, Paris Design Week and we were 
we were rushing home because we had some dinner we had to make and i saw what looked like a really cool photo but it was way in the background i didn't have time to walk all the way down there and get it so i took it that was the best i could do i just you know i use my i have a 2x on my phone i did it with a 2x then later when i had the time i just cropped it and now the image on the right was the image i saw but i couldn't get it and i didn't, it's degraded a tiny bit, but it would be so pixelated and so much um, more grain would be showing had I pinched out rather than cropped in. So crop if you can't um, zoom with your feet, but really, really resist the urge to do that pinching out with your fingers. Noted. 2X does not degrade the photo. I see that question there. No, because it's a separate lens. So that's fine. It's switching to a separate optical lens. It's only when you're pinching out that you're degrading it. All right, tip number six. This is a, a another one that I see a lot of people making this mistake. Um, pay attention to your background. Now, this is, I learned this actually in photography school. It is actually encoded in our DNA not to notice things in the background when you're taking a photo. The reason being, when we were evolving off the savanna, we, those people that survived were the people that could, um, the humans that could focus in on their prey as they were hunting and not be distracted by a bird flying by or the tree, the leaves on the trees blowing. We had to hyper focus on what we were looking at and not get distracted. So this is actually in us. So I am sure that the person taking this photo of my friend did not say, hey, Michael, stand there because it looks like a palm tree's grown out of your head. And there's a, there's a backpack right on the bench behind you. And there's this happy couple taking a selfie to your right. I am sure she saw none of this. But get in the habit of just quickly checking your background. And if you forget, if you're taking, especially of a person, you don't want plants or things growing out of their head, take a quick look at your photo. And if you see something you know, wonky like this, just say, oh, can you move a foot to the left or foot to the right? It's so much easier to correct it in the moment when you're shooting than to go back and have to go into an, an editing app and try to remove everything. It's, it's just easier to you know, pay attention either before the, sh the shot or after the shot and move the person. This kind of reminds me of the invisible gorilla test, you know, where, where, yeah, you know, right. So do you actually see the gorilla? Or do it's you the not same see the thing. You know, it's, it, just, it's it totally really the is. same. It we is. can't blame ourselves. I see things all the time on social media. Just recently, there, oh. I saw something that someone posted at an award show. Oh my God, it was so funny. <laughs> there were these lights and it literally looked like all three people were going to be beamed up out of outer space <laughs> because they each one was positioned with a light in the, uh, in the background directly. It was perfect over their head and it was like beaming me up it was so me up. you know um, I, I i just have to i have to jump in here and go get you a quick sidebar because as trade shows eventually do come back into our life my the bane of my existence is is the water bottle and so i just oh, kind of share that yeah. with you guys it, yeah. you know always at trade shows or when you're out trying to do a, a even a professional shoot there will always 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 be a water bottle in the shot so just assume that it's there and look for it and get it <laughs> get it out of there it's those funny little things and i just sort of trained myself just there's always a water bottle i may not see the water <laughs> bottle but i'll see the gorilla you know like <laughs> yeah and, and you know what my water bottle is the dunkin donuts coffee cup i see it's like Dunkin's. every single time i see the dunkin Do in mass anyway the dunkin donuts coffee on the kitchen counter you know no. that the workmen left there so and I've it, got it's clear because you know in, in montana it has to be the water bottle because yeah. the rest of us actually are allowed to drink wine and so in my case it would be the wine glass which is guaranteed to be in every picture that's because there that's is okay, one though. everywhere that's culture that's that's totally fine <laughs> Sorry, Linda, as you were. <laughs> <laughs> so my last tip is the most important one. And if you remember not a single thing from this talk, it is this. If I could scream this to the world, turn off the interior lights. And Everybody. I always thought they had to be on. I, everyone I thinks that. Sworn. Everyone. I, I have so many people that go in and they, they turn on all the lights because they think yeah. they have to have the lights on. So this is what I'm going to tell you. When you're shooting an interior, you want to time your shoot. So you want to time it when you don't have hard sunlight streaming through a window. 
you want to be evenly lit and have enough light so you can shoot it without the lights being on. Because look what happens when you leave the lights on. And this is universal. You get, let's look at the, the slide first on the left. Your, your um, pendant lights are blown out. You have these dark, ugly shadows being cast from underneath the kitchen island there. But look what is happening to the backsplash. It is pure white. There is no bringing that back in editing. The under cabinet lights have totally blown out the backsplash. And then even worse, I think, is the image on the right. You have white circles in the ceiling. You have um, glare, terrible glare on the countertop um, and even on the wall. And But look at the black holes underneath the cabinetry. There's just nothing there. Um, and if you look, the there is a shade down on the window over the sink. Now, had the photographer just opened up that shade, turned off the lights, that would have been a beautiful shot. So if the room is so dark that you can't find a time of the day where there's enough light, then I am it is just unfortunately not a job for a cell phone. Then you do have to hire the I professional. But that is so there. rare, unless it's an internal, like I have an internal bathroom in our condo. There is literally no windows. It is pitch black without the lights on. I had to hire a professional because she brought in all the little tiny lights and she can light, they will light it so it doesn't look lit. But the phones today, if you have any of the newer models, they have dark mode. It is, I think it's going to put professionals out of business once people learn how to use their phones. Seriously, you can take a picture in an almost pitch dark room and it's going to look good. So the technology is getting there. Another couple of years, it's just going to be amazing. Um, but Linda, we have a couple of questions here yes. for you that are probably relevant to this particular topic. Yes. Uh, Michelle Alfano is asking, what if you have a special architectural uh, uh, light coves and you want the coves to be lit? Do you turn all other lights off? Um, you know, if you want the coves to be lit, I, I would definitely turn all the other lights off. It's comp this is like a really complicated lighting situation. If the cove lights are on a dimmer, then you want to turn them all the way down so they're just barely on. And that also applies if you're shooting occasionally, like 99% of the time, a professional interior photographer comes in. They don't, they only use natural light. But if you have a chandelier and it's on a dimmer, then you turn it all the way down, you will be able to shoot the chandelier with the light on and it will look beautiful. But if it's not on a dimmer, it's gonna blow out just like in these photos here. So the same thing kind of applies to the cove. You can try it, but um, unless it's on a dimmer, I think it is going to cause really bad glare down the, down the wall uh, of the cove and it, it may not may not work. So, uh, okay, and Vicki Sanderson is asking, how do you feel about apps that automatically fix pics like Snapseed? Oh, I use them on every sh every single photo I take. Absolutely, you gotta learn the apps, yes. Apps are great. Um, I always end up tweaking something, whether it's the shadows or the highlights or the white balance, um, but apps are really, really important. And my two favorite apps, and I use them 99% of the time, is Snapsy and Touch Retouch. What Snapsy does is pretty much anything you'd need to, to fix in a photo. You can lighten shadows, you can um, bring the highlights down, you can fix the color, saturation, um, you can just pretty much anything. It, it's just a great app and it's on the phone and it's easy and it's, it, it's both, it's made, it, Snapseed is by Google. So it's made for Android. It's made for obviously Pixel and it's made for iPhone. So I use that on almost every photo before I post do you, it. Do you, does your, and, and again, for everybody that's just now joining, um, uh, do you, does your course include instructions on Snapseed and apps like that? My iPhone class I just released does not, but I'm halfway through a course just on editing. Editing is so complicated, it needs to be its own course. Okay. But again, the editing course I'm making is for designers. So I'm going okay. to be showing how to how to edit rooms and architecture and not worry about editing, you know, family, family photos. And but once you learn how to 
fix an interior, which is the most challenging edit you can do, then you can edit anything. So my editing class, my goal for my editing class is to be out actually before the end of the year. I'm half done. Okay, perfect. And uh, yeah, and, and just for everybody that has just joined, uh, Linda has an iPhone photography class for interiors. Uh, we'll post the link in the comment section here today, and there's a special discount for a kitchen and bath industry group member. So we'll, we'll look for that in a minute. And, uh, and then new courses, I understand, are coming up. So I didn't want to completely stop you. I know we have a couple of slides to go, but this was important. And, and there's still more questions too. Yes. Okay. Um, so this one is just showing, even if your lights aren't showing in your image, it's still going to affect your photo. So the photo on the left, the overhead lights were on. And what happens besides the glare and the hot spots and the shadows is you're going to get a color cast on your entire image. And the color cast is going to depend on what temperature bulb you have in your lights. So in this case, the overhead lights had a warm bulb in it. So you can see it casts like a pinky yellow um color shift on the wall on the fabric on on the rug on everything the photo on the right was taken literally seconds later same shot same scene just turned the lights off and you can see the difference how it's now it's it's color correct it's bright the colors are true just even look at the pillow um the pillow on the left which sort of looks like this muddy you know color versus the pillow on the right which is the real it's like a bright teal is the true color so always again turn off the lights and it just takes some practice but again you just time your shoot the time of the day where you don't have harsh sun streaming through the window because that's an possible. Even professionals won't shoot in that kind of light. I worked for a, um, a home magazine for a couple of years and I, I was the assistant editor and I didn't do the photography for it. They always hired the top interior photographers in Boston, but they knew I was a, a former professional. The first question they asked me when I would call to book them is, what time of the day should I come? Because they knew what that was the question to ask. They don't want to come there with sun streaming through the window. It's too hard for them to light. So they always want to shoot with natural light. That's the trend today, um, just available natural light. And again, because the cameras, the light sensor is so advanced right now, the, especially with the newer models, you can really get a pretty decent shot. Um, even if it's somewhat of a dark day. One of my favorite times to shoot is on an overcast, you know, sort of a dreary day, as long as it's bright enough in the room, then you don't have to worry about sun and you can shoot any time of the day you want because the light is going to be fairly consistent throughout the day. Excellent. Excellent. And then just in summary, for those that came in late, I'll just quickly go over again the, the seven tips. You want to hold your phone straight, which means don't hold it up by your face and tip it down. It should be on the same plane as what you're shooting. So if you're shooting an interior, that's generally about waist level or maybe you know a few inches above your waist, but have it be on the same plane as the furniture. Um, number two, Take some time to learn the features of your phone because they're really valuable. They can really take your phone from, you know, point and shoot, this is definitely an uh, cell phone photo, to, oh, that might be taken by a DSLR camera. That looks good. Number three, absolutely learn to set the exposure and the focus manually. You should control how bright, how dark, what's in focus, what isn't with your um, photo. And it's so easy to do it just by holding your finger on that screen. Um, and on the iPhone, it's the yellow box. And on the Android, I think it's a dot. Number four, um, turn on your in-camera grid. Again, it's settings, camera, and grid. And that will put a nice series of grid lines on your camera screen when you go to take the pictures. So if you're shooting an interior, you can line up the edge of a cabinet or the top of a window, or even if you know your ceiling is straight, a ceiling line. So you know your phone is going to be straight and your lines will look straight. Number six, get in the habit of checking your background. And you might not see it, especially with an interior. Sometimes it's hard to see when you're in a three-dimensional space. But look at your phone screen. Make sure that there isn't like a, a lamp in the background so it appear, that's, appears that just the shade is sitting on top of the sofa or a chair or that a plant doesn't look like it's, you know, literally growing out of a chair. Take a minute to check your background. 
probably most of you have worked with professionals before and they will spend you know half the shoot moving this an inch moving that an inch to get everything perfect on the screen where i think a lot of people using their their cell phone don't take that time and they just go in and shoot and then they you know afterwards when they've left the project they look at their phone and they see all these things so you need to get in the habit of kind of doing it in the moment and it doesn't take long and it's just getting in the practice and then you'll find you can do it really really quickly and we're we're all creatives we're very detail oriented so we would you know see it more easily than joe public who's taking a picture of a room and doesn't see anything we're gonna we're gonna see it and then the most important tip always turn off your interior lights now there are again very specific situations where you can leave them on but i'm talking like one percent of the time or less and only if they have a dimmer on it so you can turn them all the way down otherwise they're just going to be too bright and the contrast between you know the difference between the highlights and the shadows are going to be really challenging to fix even in editing so there you go and i'm really easy to get a hold of if anybody wants to get a hold of me um i'm on Every, pretty much everywhere and if you are interested in buying my iphone class it's this class again is just for iphone i'm going to be doing an android class and my editing class will be out hopefully in a couple of weeks but i do have a one-time discount code just for people that are um that it's stuck with me here to the end and it's kbig kitchen and bath industry group if you forget kbig Maybe. I like it. <laughs> and you can just go in and put that in. There's a place for a coupon when you go in to purchase it. Now, this is only good till tomorrow night at midnight. So if you are interested, grab this soon because it ends Friday night at midnight. That's so I, I hope this was yeah. helpful and I'm happy to answer any questions that we might have missed. There were, there were two that we missed and, okay. and I don't see the names. We've scrolled past them, but angled or direct shots being one and then uh flash on the iphone yay or nay two different oh, questions let's Go. start with the flash first <laughs> turn it off turn it off all the time never ever ever use it no seriously there are times when you can use it but not for an interior the problem with the flash it has an eight foot range of distance so it's only going to light what's between your camera and eight feet away it's a hard flash professionals never use any kind of an in-camera flash so turn it off you don't need it um sometimes if you're outside you can use it as fill flash if you know what that means but never for interiors it'll what it hits will be glaringly bright and what it doesn't hit will get really dark. So no to flash. And then angled, what was the question? Angled or direct shots angled or, or like direct. head on it, head on or yeah, angled. Yeah. I think for so. interiors, I do the um, straight on shots. That's called one point perspective with, and again, it's because the cell phone has such a wide angle lens. If you're doing an angled shot, your lines are going to be really off. So it's easier to shoot straight on. And if you flip through any of the shelter magazines, about 90 to 95% of those shots are, are shot straight on. How a realtor will shoot at an angle because the angle shots are really good if you wanna show the whole room and, and you'll, see the, you'll see two walls, but it's for interiors, it's better in most cases shoot straight on. This has been incredible. Um, Linda, thank you again. Thank you, everybody, for joining. We've got Jamie in the in the crowd today. Leslie Fine, who's looking forward to your editing uh, oh, class. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. I have Leslie on my mind. She is. Yeah, on my Leslie mind. on your mind. You may have me <laughs> I'm on working your mind on too. it, Leslie. I'm working uh, on it. A couple weeks. It's hopefully. Super cool. I was Susie Fia, Suzanne Felber, Vicky Sanderson, Michelle Cortizo. The list goes on and on. Margo yeah. Austin. Uh, thank you, guys, everybody, for showing up. Uh, thank Katie for showing up and not having a birthday party. I know. I don't know if I would have done that. I would have said, ah, forget it. It's my birthday. I'm not. Just oh, vacation it is. For the cause, you know? Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I'm, I'm in it to win it. You know, it's just. She, she's in it to win it. She, yeah, she's just not going to let me go solo or, you know, she's just too protective of, of this whole thing. But, uh, are you going to go out and give me presents? What's happening? Yeah, no, so we're doing, John and I are just doing, uh, we're doing dinner here tonight. Um, I still have half of my tree to get lights on and, and, 
come hell or high water, that thing is going to have the lights done by tomorrow morning. We're having dinner with my brother and sister-in-law tomorrow night, so they'll get to see the tree lit. But the as thing is like heard, 18 feet tall. It is. Yes, ah, you're allowed to do an infection. Oh my it is 18 feet tall. It's you have to post a photo. I'd love to see well, that. I will. I will. It's yeah. It's, it's you need to see the wall. photo of the thing on top of the. What is that car? <laughs> That's not a car. The suburban. Yeah. It's an RV. It's ridiculous. It's a, it's a complete Griswold moment. And, and they went to the, to the forest and they dug out with their bare hands. How okay, did you get a 18 foot tree home? Do you have like a big flatbed truck? No, so we have a suburban. So you know, and, and that, that's there? that's one oh. heck of a well, not in there. No, we yeah. have on top. No, but yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's just, it's, yeah, they're living the, the Montana trunk, life, and we're front, watching yeah. it. You know, from <laughs> us East Coasters, we look at this with some you know degree skepticism. Of yeah, <laughs> that's the word I was looking at. Thank you, everybody, yes. for coming, Linda. Thank you. The link oh, is going to be posted in the comments, so and KBIG is is the code for the discount. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much, everybody. Yep. See you next week.